Welcome everybody to chapter 11 of the Fantastic Mr. Fox, a surprise for Mrs. Fox. We have Miss Jackson here today with us to read about the Fox Friends. We're so excited. So we've been talking about suspense here and how there's a lot of suspense, a lot of building up to a big moment. These farmers are going after these foxes and they're just constantly digging and digging. And it's just, there's no relaxation here. So let's see what this surprise from Mrs. Fox. All right, I'll start, Miss J Ms. Jackson. All right. The small fox ran back along the tunnel as fast as he could, carrying the three plump hens. He was exploding with joy. Just wait, he kept thinking. Just wait till mommy sees these. He had a long way to run, but he never stopped once on the way. And he came bursting in upon Mrs. Fox. Mommy, he cried out of breath. Look, mommy, look. Wake up and see what I've brought you. Mrs. Fox, who was weaker than ever now from lack of food, opened one eye and looked at the hens. I'm dreaming, she murmured and closed the eye again. You're not dreaming, mommy. They're real chickens. We're saved. We're not going to starve. Mrs. Fox opened both eyes and sat up quickly. But my dear child, she cried, where on earth? Bogus is chicken house number one, spluttered the small fox. We tunneled right up under the floor. And you've never seen so many big heads in all your life. And Dad said to prepare a feast. They'll be back soon. The sight of food seemed to give new strength to Mrs. Fox. A feast it shall be, she said, standing up. Oh, what a fantastic fox your father is. Hurry up, child, and start plucking those chickens. Far away, down in the tunnel, the fantastic Mr. Fox was saying, now for the next bit, my darlings, this one will be easy as pie. All we have to do is dig another little tunnel from here to there. To where, Dad? Don't ask so many questions. Start digging. And that is the end of that chapter, friends. We have a lot of branching off from one chapter to the other with these little spec chapters that lead to larger, more informative chapters. Now we are going to jump right into chapter 12 because we have these quick chapters and this chapter is called Badger. Hmm. Mr. Fox and the three remaining small foxes dug fast and straight. They were all too excited now to feel tired or hungry. They knew they were going to have a whacking great feast before long. And the fact that it was none other than bogus chickens they were going to eat made them churgle with laughter every time they thought of it. It was lovely to realize that while the fat farmer was sitting up there on the hill waiting for them to starve, he was also giving them their dinner without knowing it Without knowing it, keep digging, said Mr. Fox. It's not much further. All of a sudden, a deep voice above their heads said, Who goes there? The foxes jumped. They looked up quickly and they saw, peeking through a small hole in the roof of the tunnel, a long, black, pointed, furry face. Badger, cried Mr. Fox. See, cried Badger. My goodness me, I'm glad I found someone at last. I've been digging around in circles for three days and nights and I haven't the foggiest idea where I am. Badger made the hole in the ceiling bigger and dropped down beside the foxes. A small badger, his son, dropped down after him. Haven't you heard what's happening up on the hill? Badger said excitedly. It's chaos. Half the wood was disappeared and there were our men with oh, weapons all over the countryside. None of us can get out, even at night. We're all starving. Oh, who, we? asked Mr. Fox. All us diggers? That's me and Mole and Rabbit and all our wives and children, even Weasel who can usually sneak out of the tightest spots is right now hiding down my hole with Mrs. Weasel and six kids. What on earth are we going to do, Foxy? I think we're finished. 
Mr. Fox looked at his three children and he smiled. The ch children smiled back at him, sharing his secret. My dear old badger, he said, this mess you're in is all my fault. I know it's my fault, and I know it's your fault, said Badger furiously, and the farmers are not going to give up till they're, they've got you. Unfortunately, that means us as well. It means everyone on this hill. Badger sat down and put a paw around his small son. We're done for, he said softly. My poor wife up there is so weak she can't dig another yard. Nor can mine, said Mr. Fox. And yet, at this very minute, she is preparing for me and my children the most delicious feast of plump, juicy chickens. Stop, cried Badger. Don't tease me. I can't stand it. It's true, cried the small foxes. That's not teasing. We've got chickens galore. And because everything is entirely my fault, said Mr. Fox, I invite you to share the feast. I invite everyone to share it. You and Mole and Rabbit and Weasel and all your wives and children. There'll be plenty to go around, I can assure you. You mean it? cried Badger. You really mean it? Mr. Fox pushed his face close to Badger's and whispered darkly, do you know where we've just been? Where? Right inside. Bogus's chicken house number one. No! Yes, but that is nothing to where we are going now. You have come just at the right moment, my dear Badger. You can help us dig. And in the meanwhile, your small son can run back to Mrs. Badger and all the others and spread the good news. Mr. Fox turned to the small Badger and said, tell them they're invited to a fox's feast. Then bring them all down here and follow the tunnel back until you find my home. Yes, Mr. Fox, said the small badger. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. And he scrambled quickly back through the hole in the roof of the tunnel and disappeared. And that is the end of our chapter. Well, that tells me a lot about Mr. Fox. I, I, I can think of some character traits for him right now. I mean, he's helping these other animals. Maybe you can think of it, too. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Jackson, I bet you're thinking the same thing, Miss Jackson, I I told you, Ms. the same thing as me about this character here. That's really... I am. Those are a lot of character traits. I mean, oh, that fox, you have to watch out for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Think about that and jot about that today. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>